Hey there, this is Jonathan Ross, and in the following set of tutorials, we're going to take a look at using Adobe Audition to create a simple multi-track edit. Now, the first thing that we need to do is record the voiceover for our edit. So, let's talk a little bit about microphones and scripts. So, the first thing is getting a great microphone to record. This is a studio mic that not many of us can afford, but it's just awesome quality. Now, this uses what's called an XLR cable and that's really important because this microphone needs to be powered from an external source and that external source is a, an audio interface like this M audio fast track and what it does is you plug it in and then you give it phantom power it's called and what that does is that powers up the microphone and then it also allows you to set the gain on the microphone, meaning that you um, set how loud the microphone is going, or how sensitive the microphone is going to be for the recording. And then also it has a USB usually in the back that allows you to plug it into the computer. Now you can bypass this if you get a microphone that actually has this condenser stuff built in. I'm um, sorry, not condenser, USB built in. And so here is a USB condenser mic, which is really quite good. And uh, you just plug it right into the computer and you're ready to go pretty much. Now, anytime that you do use a microphone like this, you do have to be aware of having some sort of pop filter. Because if you speak right into the mic, and you can kind of see the mic is almost kind of made for you to speak into it, um, you're going to get some plosives typically. And it would sound kind of like this. B and B and T and R. So you're trying to avoid those types of sounds. I'm going to be using actually a headset mic, and the benefit of that is that it has an arm typically that goes pretty much straight out, and that way it's beside your mouth rather than right in front of it. And you don't want to, to swing that arm right in front of your mouth because you'll get those same plosives. Now, not all headset mics can do decent recordings, of course. There's no way that it can beat the level of recording that this Neumann and a really good audio interface um, can do for you. And so, of course, like Edderall and some other makers make really, really high quality um, amplifiers, which is what that's doing. It's amplifying what's called the mic level up to line level for the computer. Now, um, the next thing that you need once you've got that set up is you need to set it up so that your computer can understand uh, that signal. So if you go over to your speaker or your volume controls, if you right click, you can go to recording devices and hopefully you'll see your recording device there, whether it's the microphone or the um, external USB audio device. Um, you'll see that in that list. If not, then what you want to do is show disabled devices and hopefully you'll see it there. Now, double click on it and you'll be able to go to the levels and also with the advanced panel. In the levels, you want to set the microphone to the appropriate level. And you might have to monitor this. This particular microphone, I could take a little bit louder, but I've noticed that when I do, it, it does add a little bit of noise. And so I'm choosing to actually record just a little bit under the premium level that I could do. Um, because if you add more boost, more um, gain then you also add noise like this. Hopefully you could hear a little bit of static in there. Now the next thing you want to do is uh, th I have all the effects and all that turned off for this mic. If you turn on something like echo cancellation then it will really sound kind of crazy. And also noise suppression that's that's gonna apply some sort of digital artifacts that you don't really want. Then you want to go to your advanced panel and you want to set the mic to 48,000 hertz, or 48 kilohertz, and that's the studio requi uh, quality, rather than the 44 one that a lot of us are used to. I choose to use the 24-bit just so I get a little bit better audio signal there, too. And once that's all set up, then the next thing that we need to do is look at a script. So I found a script online. And uh, here it is. Hello and welcome to ISM Radio. We've got loads of news and gossip. So it's some gossip and news show that also has some music. And so what I liked about this is that you'd insert one music or one musician and then another musician and then you'd have something else later. And I was kind of inspired by this to write my own script, um, which is about listening to new songs by Sting and then also Taylor Swift. Um, and these were 
musicians that my, my students suggested. Now, <clears throat> when we write this script, I want you to be um, aware of the syntax that's going on, and that is, it's written to be read. It's not written, t sorry, it's written to be said. It's not written for it to be read. And it, when we tend to write um, for the written word, then we write really long sentences. But when we write for it to be said and, and heard, we need to write really short, compact sentences, and we also can use the grammar of speech rather than the grammar that would be considered proper grammar for English papers. So here you can see I have these ellipses, which mean to pause right there, and I have another line here, which means to pause, and I even have contractions in the speech and even slang, and that's fine. Also notice that I have a break between I'm your host, Jonathan, and then today. If not, it would indicate that I would just keep on talking. And so by putting in these breaks, even if it's just one simple sentence, um, then what you're doing is you're guiding the person who's doing the voiceover, even if it's yourself, to know to take breaks at those times. So let's go back to our software and let's start our recording. In order to do this, we can right-click and choose New Audio File. Now, we can also do that over here a couple other places. So anyway, I'm going to do this as my full recording. And the reason I'm making it all uh, uppercase is for no in particular reason other than I know this is something I don't want to delete or change. And I'm going to be saving out a couple different versions of this recording. So uh, my sampling rate is at 48,000 hertz and the reason we use that is for digital video instead of like CD-ROMs. Um, and then I'm going to use mono as the channels. The reason why is because we want just the voiceover as a single channel instead of stereo. That way when we p play it back, it will be the same volume on both the left and the right. And that's usually the best balance when it comes to a voiceover. Now I'm also going to change it to 24-bit. Um, we could go 32-bit if we wanted a little bit higher quality. Um, I definitely would not go down to 18, but 24 or 16 should work, but I'm going to take it to 24. All right, now I'm in the um, editing of that particular um, file. So we go down to the record and press that, and hopefully we will see our um, audio output on screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause that so that it doesn't keep on recording, um, and then I'll get my script up and then start reading it. So just be aware that you can pause at any time and you can see your levels. Now the level that you're really going for is about negative 12 to negative 9. So you want to be kind of in that range as the sweet spot for your recording. So this is just a little bit under, but that's because otherwise it goes a little bit above and I'm adding a lot of gain on this microphone. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and read the script. I'm going to unpause it and pull up my script and take a pause. Welcome to the Music News Radio Show. I'm your host, Jonathan. Today we've got loads of news and gossip and of course, lots of new songs and great music for you. Let's start up with a new song by Sting. Great new song by Sting. That one's gonna be a classic. Did you hear that Taylor Swift has a new song too? Well, here it is. Thanks for listening today, folks. Come back next week when we explore the music of the 80s with Madonna, Prince, and everybody's favorite, Michael Jackson. All right, pretty good. Now, if you ever did want to reread a section, just go have a little pause and then read it. Great new song by Sting. Great new song by Sting. That one's gonna be a classic. So, of course, you can make as many uh, recordings as you want. Um, I would rather, I think it's easier to do it in one big lump sum um, with pauses in between and then kind of tell people which take really work the best. Um, otherwise, you go with uh, you gut instinct, of course. And what we're going to do now is save this and go on to our next project, which is editing it.